We're, today we're going to apply what we've learned about adding and subtracting integers with some uh, real world problems or real life scenarios. And remember an integer is just uh, whole numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and their opposites, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, and so on, plus 0. So we're going to do some practical examples of adding and subtracting integers. We're going to see how they apply to the real world. First example, let's read this together. Tommy is $3 in debt. Sammy gives Tommy $18. How much money does Tommy have now? All right, some of you could probably read this and know exactly what the answer is, but I'm going to break it down for those of you who need some extra help. Um, we're going to go step by step. First thing I tell my students when doing a word problem is to circle or underline keywords. So we're going to go back through and read this together. And as we do, we're just going to notate some stuff in and around keywords. So Tommy is $3 in debt. Okay, so what does debt mean? <laughs> that means you don't have the money, you owe the money. When you owe somebody money, um, that is a negative number. So I underline the word debt, and I put a negative sign next to 3. That's important. It's easy to do, and that way we know exactly how to set up our problem. Well, let's keep going. Sammy gives Tommy $18. Keyword here is give, so I underlined it, and I put a plus sign next to 18 because when Tommy is receiving $18, that's plus 18 for him. Okay, so you could think of it another way. Debt is a, has a negative connotation, so it's negative. Giving is a positive con connotation, so it's positive. All right, so how much money does Tommy have now? That leads us to the next step. We're going to convert what we've just read to math. And since we put a negative around 3, because it's negative 3, we're going to write negative 3. And since he received $18 from Sammy, that's plus 18. Now that we've done step two, convert to math, now we're just going to solve it. Negative 3 plus 18 is the same as 18 minus 3, which is 15. So the answer is $15. Tommy, now we've answered the question, which says how much money does Tommy have now? The answer is 15. So just follow these th three easy steps to get the right answer. Don't try to do it all at once. Break it down. Take your time. That way you don't get overwhelmed. That way you can be sure you're going to get the right answer every time. So there's an example involving money. Let's look at another example. You are 1,100 feet elevation and you descend 560 feet. What is your new elevation? So again, we're going to circle or underline keywords. So let's read this again together. You are at 1,100 uh, feet elevation. Well, elevation is a keyword in... Um, we know that if you're 1,100 feet of elevation, you're above sea level, and so I'm going to put a plus next to elevation and underline that word. Let's keep reading, and descend 560 feet. So the word descend is a key word. Descend means go down, okay? So I'm going to put a negative sign next to 560, and I'm going to underline the word descend. That's basically all we need before we get to step two. We'll convert to math. So we're going to take our positive, um, 1100 and we're going to subtract 560 from that since we have a minus sign there. Okay, so it's 1100 uh, minus 560 and that's the conversion and once we convert we can solve it. We, it's just a simple subtraction problem, what 1100 minus 560. In this case we can do long subtraction and borrow our ones and whatnot. Final answer is 540. 1100 minus 560 is 540 feet, and that answers our question of what our new elevation is. So again, to recap the three simple steps, circle keywords, convert to math, and then solve. As you do this, you'll get more and more comfortable with these steps. You are at a 500, this is example three, you are at 5,000 feet elevation and are hiking to a mountain with a 8,300 feet peak. How much higher do you have to go? Um, so let's go ahead and do step one together, which is circle keywords. You are at 5,000 feet, okay? And you're hiking to a mountain with a 8,300 foot peak. How much higher do you have to go? So first of all, just like the previous example, if you're at 5,000 feet, that's a plus, right? So we're going we're gonna to 
underline the keyword elevation, and we're going to put a plus next to 5,000. And you're hiking to a mountain with an 8,300 foot peak. Okay, so again, we're going to put a plus around 8,300 because that's also positive uh, 8,300 feet above sea level. Then we're going to underline how much higher. Okay, we're going to underline that because we're trying to get from 5,000 to 8,300. So we're talking about a gap, which means we're going to be subtracting. So when we convert this to math, we're going to 8,300 is our destination. 5,000 is where we are. So we would have to subtract these two to figure out how much higher we have to hike. The answer for this one is going to be 3,300 feet. And as I told my students, sometimes with these uh, problems, not always, it does help to draw a picture. And I kind of wish I would have made that the first step. But like with money, and like for the first example, you know, you can't really draw a picture. Um, but with some of them, you can. So draw a picture if you can. Um, and in this case, you can see if you started at 5,000 and you need to get to 8,300, there's a gap here. And you can kind of see you would take the top and subtract a smaller. So if that helps, go ahead and draw a picture. Um, if not, you can still just do these three simple steps and it's going to get you the right answer. We're going to do another one with elevation. You start at a 100-foot sand dune and run down to the beach and jump in the water and swim down 10 feet. What was your change in elevation? So that's in a lot of words, we're gonna reread it, and this time we're gonna circle keywords. So you start at a 100 foot sand dune. Again, that's a plus 100, you're 100 feet above the sea level. You run down, okay, if you're running down, you're subtracting, right? Your elevation's going down. So go ahead and underline, underline those two words. To the beach, and you jump in the water. I didn't underline this before, but I'm going to underline it now. Why? Well, if you're jumping in the water, you've already dropped 100 feet, right? You've gone from a 100-foot sand dune all the way down to the water. And then you're going to, from the water, swim down 10 feet. So what was your change in elevation? So in this case, it's really important that we draw a picture. And I've kind of drawn it down here. Here's the sand dune. Not only are we going 100 feet down into the water, but we're dropping 10 feet below that. So you can kind of already see pretty much how much you've dropped. Okay, so yes, do draw a picture. And in fact, I wish I would have made that step zero, right? Or four total steps. You know, draw a picture, um, circle keywords, convert to math, and solve. Okay, again, you, you don't always draw a picture, but if you can, go ahead and draw one and then circle your keywords, convert to math, and solve. Okay, so we've circled our keywords. Now we just need to convert to math. Well, if our starting elevation is 100 and our final one is negative 10, it's just like before with climbing the mountain, except our final elevation is negative, but we still just take the bigger and subtract the smaller. So it's going to be 100 minus negative 10, which in this case is 100 plus 10, which is 110 feet. And again, the picture confirms that. If we start at 100 feet, we not only go down 100, but we go, we go down 10 more. So we dropped 110 feet total. So to answer the question for this one, you know, um, the, the question was, what was your change in elevation? The answer is 110 feet, or you could also say you dropped 110 feet. Now we're going to deal with temperature. In many cases, when you're telling somebody what the temperature is, you wouldn't use decimals, right? You would just use integers. So we're going to do that here. The temperature outside is negative 7 degrees. It goes down 4 and then back up seven. What is the temperature now? All right, so we're gonna underline some keywords. Okay, so the temperature outside is negative seven. That's important. Every time you have a number, you should circle it or underline it. It goes down four, so we're gonna underline down because that's what? That's a drop, so we're gonna subtract. Subtract four, we're gonna underline four as well. And then back up seven. So up is a keyword, that means plus seven. What is the temperature now? So when we convert this to math, it's going to be our starting temperature, negative 7, dropped 4, so we're going to subtract 4, and then we're going to add 7 to that since it went back up 7. So now all we have to do is just do negative 7 minus 4, which is negative 11, and then add 7 to that. Final answer is negative 4 degrees. So to answer our question, the final temperature is negative uh, maybe clear. Negative four is our final temperature. So 
as you can see, these three simple steps make it really easy to get the right answer. And in this case, like I said, um, you didn't really have to draw a picture. It's kind of hard to draw a picture for temperature, although you could draw a thermometer if you wanted to. But ultimately, as long as you do these three steps, it will get you the right answer. Okay, so we're going to go back to a money example. You have $10 in your pocket. We're going to go ahead and do step one as we read this. We're going to circle it. We're going to put a plus sign because if it's in your pocket, that's plus, right? That's a good thing. But you are $25 in debt to Pete. So we're going to underline $25 in debt. We're going to put a minus next to that because of the keyword debt. Then Sue gives you $2 back. That's a plus. So we're going to put a plus next to gives. It's going to be plus 2. How much money do you have now? So when we convert this to math, it's going to be 10 in your pocket minus the 25 in debt plus 2 that Sue gives you. So it's going to look like this. 10 minus 25 plus 2. 10 minus 25, you're taking a bigger number away from a smaller one. So it's going to be negative 15. But you're in debt since you owe him money, even though you have 10 in your pocket. But then Sue gives you 2 back. So it's negative 15 plus 2, which is negative 13. And that's going to be your answer. You're, you're still $13 in debt, basically, right? And so the answer to the question is, how much money do you have now? Well, the answer is you're $13 in debt, even though she gave you $2. Um, yes, you can draw pictures, and if you want to, you can draw bills and stuff to help you understand this concept. But I think that these three steps are generally good enough to get you the right answer. And unless, of course, we talked about with elevation and stuff, it might help you to draw a picture. So that's it for this lesson. That is uh, adding and subtracting integers and use that to solve practical examples. If you have any other questions about this lesson, let me know.